Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are in the world. This is Four Shots of Kaiju Campbell, and today we're going to try to get my instructor drunk. <laughs> special edition of Four Shots. Everybody here today is a black belt in the Charles Gaylord branch of Kaiju Campo. Now, Four Shots alumni Eric Coleman and Mickey Lopez are joining us today. Eric's been in Kaiju Campo since 1984, Mickey since 1993. I came in at the tail end of 99. Uh, we are also joined today for the first time by Oliver Tildesley, who's been in Kaiju Campo since 2013. Now, the thing that unites all of us more than anything else is our mutual instructor, Ron Esteller. Uh, Sifu, when did you come into Kaju Kumbo? 1968. 1968. So as you can see, this is a very multi-generational episode today. And we're going to talk about the past, present, and future of Kaju Kumbo for us. And we're going to do it in the four shots format. Uh, Sifu and I are going to be taking a few shots throughout the show. Uh, we're excited to drink. Uh, just a reminder, Oliver, some advice for you. Don't let anybody ever tell you you don't have to drink alcohol if you don't want to, especially if you're in Vegas. Isn't that right, Mickey? No comment. No comment. <laughs> Let's get started with our show. Go ahead. I've got a good story about that, by the way. We'll oh. get there later. <laughs> you know, yeah, you're going to talk about me. I'm talking about that. <laughs> All right. Let's do our first shot and we'll get started if you guys are ready. Minute Maid, juice, and tequila. How'd you gumbo? Now, oh. our first question, I'm going to start with Eric and pass it around. Eric, what was your first impression of Kaju Kembo and or Rana Steller when you first came across it? So, first day um, I walked in. So, I started karate or martial arts in the boys club when I was actually in the second grade. They had a taekwondo uh, class. Um, then I came back in like the fourth or fifth grade and they had like a jujitsu class. And um, so my mom was always putting us in these classes or whatever. Um, it was always the same usually, or usually it was the same for the boys club, especially it was whoever goes in, it was a in and out policy, basically whoever goes in, you know, just go for the day and, and work out or train or whatever. There were some, some people that stayed, Mm -hmm. um myself and my cousins used to come um <clears throat> but when they got the kajikimo class um i thought it was the same thing we all uh got our we came in the class and it was in that back room in the exercise room back there i know mickey remembers that we um i came in and i started taking my clothes my clothes off my shoes off <laughs> what kind of school is this <laughs> right. <Where> the <laughs> oh. shots fired shots fired <laughs> so um and he was uh, the instructor was like uh it don't work like that fellas you gotta sit here and watch for uh two or three days and then you can join and we were like we paid for we played for the boys club. Why are we, we why do I have to sit there and watch? So it was my first day I was yelled at basically. <laughs> <laughs> Mickey, uh, you mentioned you were at the boys and boys and girls club as well. Was your first impression something similar? What happened with you? Well, I met uh GM at SDI in Fremont. Uh, I was taking judo at the time, and Dave Moeller was like, Hey, you gotta meet this guy. Uh Ron Esteller, he does Kaju Kembo. I'm like, what the hell is Kaju Kembo? Um, and the minute I saw, you know, GM, he was just really loud, man, just full of energy, really loud, super enthusiastic. And, you know, I asked a question. You never do that. Never. <laughs> but previous, my previous martial art, which was Cook Soul, we never made contact. So I was kind of thirsty. I was, you know, um, coming off playing a lot of basketball. I like the physicality. And then Cook Soul, the joint locks were cool. Everything was cool, but there was no contact. So I asked Jim a question, and he goes, uh, can, can you do that again? He goes, come here. <laughs> and I went, oh! And I, and I was like, he goes, well, welcome to Kaju Campo. Like, Whoa. <laughs> welcome to Kaju Campo. Whoa, man. And I said, and I was like, where's your school at? The San Leandro Boys Club. And I was like, man, I am too 
minutes from there. And, you know, I've been with Ron ever since. So um, it's just, yeah, I don't, I can't even explain that. I think I was PTSD still till this day. <laughs> because of that. But hey, you know, it, it's one of those things where it was love. It was called you love. That's what, that's when I first heard of that. And it still is. Yeah. Bringing the Ohana feeling. Now, Oliver, uh, where are you from originally? I'm originally from England. Originally from England. Now, coming to America and experiencing this Hawaiian martial arts, uh, what was your first experience with Kaiju Kambo and Sifu Ron? So, so when I first moved here, I, I'd always wanted to do martial arts as a child. I was, I was obsessed with it. I've always wanted to try it out. So I originally went to a school here in Pleasanton on Pleasanton Main Street. It was a Taekwondo school, but it was like, it was, they would, they would, you would get belts like that. Like I got my orange belt in like the first like three months. And then once I got to my orange belt, they were like, oh yeah, uh, can we have $5,000 for you to like continue going forwards? And I, and my, and my parents were like, yeah, no, that's not happening. So um, my mom was like looking around, looking to trying to find something. And when Groupon was a big thing, there was a Groupon for uh, free, uh, um, for free, uh, for a certain amount of money, you got eight classes. I walked in on that first class. I saw Sifu sitting behind the desk, just looking at me. He goes, oh, new, new kid and everything. And I walked right in, got my butt whooped that very first day. I was doing, I, did, I think I did over 100 push-ups that day. <laughs> Fresh meat. <laughs> yep. Now, Sifu, uh, how about you We're going back to... Hey, wait, uh, wait, 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 John. Yeah? <laughs> oh, my first impression. You, you need to tell your story. Oh. <laughs> you need... So, uh, I don't, this wasn't the first day. Well, maybe we should we should wait to get to this. Yeah, yeah, let, let, let's wait. Let, oh. let, let's your first, your story. No, we'll, we'll go ahead. Which story are you going to talk about? I, I can edit this video. Um, the uh, Fight Quest. Um... Oh, yeah. Oh, no, that's go, not go, that's go, not go, what go. I was that's no. not what I was talking about. Go ahead, Eric. I was talking about the day that uh, we did some demo. It wasn't Fight Quest. It was it was some demo, and it was at it was like a Cherryland Festival or something like that. And um, <clears throat> you did. I think you were. I forget what what punch attack you were doing, but there was a kick to the head. And you, you pretty much knocked John out. He was like out on his feet, like he could. No, you know what? It, if this one, thing I'm thinking it was not at the chairline. It might have been at Dino's. There was a Grandmaster Gaylord birthday party where he knocked me out with a knee to the head. No, and... this was a like a scrape kick to the head. Oh. <laughs> Three different times. Sorry. Three yeah, different times. Was... I don't remember this one. Obviously, something happened. Oh, you know what it was? It was. It was at um, it was at a safe kids thing. It was <laughs> okay. That sounds more familiar. I, I, I've gotten some bloody noses at the safe kids. Thing. It was at a safe kids thing, and yeah, and and um, because the kids were like, <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? You I ended up doing. Up, a... You tried to get up and you stumbled, and somebody had to stop or stop you from getting up. And I know the kids were like. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I was a substitute teacher there later, and no one gave me any shit. Huh. <laughs> now, yeah, actually, tell, what, tell us that, about your first experience. Well, my first experience in Kaiju Kembo, the first time I saw a class was a Sifu Ron class. And it was, you know, different. It was awesome. It was eye-opening. But the most shocking thing for me and a bunch of other people who were taking that class for the first time was how much he beat the shit out of poor Martin Gomez. <laughs> the, he he got hit he, that guy was an uke champion and like i went up after i've seen other people do this like after class like hey nice to meet you are you okay he was hitting you hard do you want us to call the police or something i mean is everything all right uh that was a shocking thing for us that was uh but otherwise it was cool for me because i came from a mcdojo similar to what oliver was coming from and Similar to Mickey, you know, like, hey, we actually hit here. That was kind of nice. Uh, it's a whole new experience for me. Now, uh, Sifu, how about you going back to the 1960s? Uh, what was your first impression of Kaiju Kembo and Sigun Juarez? Um, Juarez was, a, was an angry young man. His class consisted of 
coming in, beating the shit out of everybody in class, and then leaving. It, it wasn't. It wasn't very. Wasn't very friendly. Uh, we had all with the Palin brothers. Max had just left, <laughs> but we had the uh, William Palin, Basilio Palin, their cousin Catalino. Uh, there was a lot of. It was an army there, of uh, just monsters, and there was wasn't really too much of a kids class. Um, so I was probably the youngest, one of the youngest ones in that class. Um, and it was, I, you know, I, my only experience at the martial arts up at that time is about six months of Taekwondo with my friend, um, my friend Dave Badalana, uh, one of my first friends that I met when I moved to San Leandro. Um, he was taking classes there, so I went with him. He ended up um, quitting that class and they were my ride. So then I started, uh, did a two week course at Karate Ways. It was like another one of the first of the McDojos. And mm -hmm. I think I did a free week, maybe two weeks. And then same thing, asked my mom for a bunch of money and that just wasn't happening. Uh, ended up, uh, she ended up finding the, the MacArthur Boulevard studio, which was uh, Gaylord School that he turned over to uh, Gabe Vargas. Mm -hmm. And um, and but Jim was mostly the teacher there of, of the classes that I was in. There were some years there that uh, Vargas was was ill, wasn't uh, teaching that much, and Jim was teaching a lot of those classes. So I always considered myself his student. Mm -hmm. So that was your first impression there. Were you, it was, imagine, much different than the. Well, they were hitting that each one. other. That's what I loved about it, is they were yeah. just banging. They were just banging all the time. Excellent. All right. So if you guys are ready, we're going to take our next shot and move on to our next question. Salud. Salud. Now, where we go with this next question kind of depends on a couple things. Um, for the, this is a question for everybody first. So show of hands, raise your hand if the answer is yes. Has Sifu Ron ever knocked you out? No, just me. Okay. Uh, that's good to know. So I know where to go with this question. We'll start off with Mickey. Oh, yeah. How many have you have seen the white light or your grandma? <laughs> <laughs> that counts. <laughs> Mickey. I've been waiting all day for that joke. <laughs> Mickey, I want to go to you first then. Um, how's the sparring been? The, the sparring, the live drills? Uh, since you first came back at the, the SDI days and boys club days, has the sparring and live drills changed much or are they still kind of the same? Uh, like right now? Compared to the or, past, or, yeah. Or, or when I or when we were sparring back in the day? Both, everything. Oh, I mean, you know, I, I'd say, uh, do I need to put gloves on? he go, what gloves? <laughs> so we would just straight knuckle up and, and, and scrap, man. And, you know, there was no shin guards. You, you know, you would just throw, you know, um, and that's the way Ron did it. You know, it was, it was on the concrete. We're getting thrown on the, I, I think there was some mat, but you know, Ron would be like, Hey, if there was a wooden floor, he'd throw you on the wooden floor. We anywhere, bro, like anywhere, mm -hmm. you know? So it was as reality based, uh, as it was. So he's like, he kept it really real. And I think that's why I, I really liked it. So I've yeah. seen a bunch of classes more recently with people wearing shoes. I know like Hawk Hawk is a big thing about training in shoes. Did you do that? Were you guys doing shoes as well? Or were you guys always barefoot? We were always barefoot for the most part. Yeah. We used to have we used to have like one day out of the like out of the year, maybe, that we would be able to train in like street clothes. Um, <clears throat> but I don't think we we might have worn shoes if we were out in the gym, mm -hmm. but we never wore shoes on the mat, right. like, ever. Okay. Now, how about you, Eric? Like, the sparring, live drills. You also had some time in uh, New Mexico. Was anything changed since then to now, today? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, when I started, <clears throat> we didn't have any gloves. Like, we barely had gloves. We barely had... Matter of fact, claim to fame, my mom bought the first uh, pad that we had. You remember that? She bought the first kicking pad. Before that, we would 
have to kick each other. So <laughs> <laughs> it was not. <laughs> I guess my mom felt sorry for us. I don't know what it was, but we went to uh, Kim Pacific and we were going to go buy ge- ge- geese. And my mom saw the kicking pad and she was like, oh, I'm going to buy this for, for, the, uh, for the class. So as far as sparring, as far as anything, we didn't have like, like I remember coming back after being gone for a while and seeing kids with like chest protectors and all this stuff. And I'm like, what is, what's, what's going on here? <laughs> like, like who is my, who is this guy? Who, who, where, where did this come from? So it was, yeah, it was, it was a huge, it was a difference. And I laughed because I asked him, he was like, um, I have to pay insurance now. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. All right. Just my me. <laughs> now coming over to Oliver by yourself. Uh, you've been in Kaiju Kembo for what, like nine years now? 13, yeah, nine, like nine years. Nine years, nine oh. years in October this year. All right. So nine years in Kaiju Kembo, but then also comparing that to your last school's how do you feel that over the time of your life experience with sparring drills, uh, live drills, everything? So when I first started at my, the, the first dojo I went to, sparring was like headgear, chest gear, arm gear that came down to like here, shin gear that covered all, all the feet and everything. So that's what I was used to. I, I come to Sifu school and there was still gloves, but that was it. There, there was nothing else. Yeah. And, and it was more of like, go in and see what happens and try to survive. <laughs> Trying to survive is a good um, one. So, uh, and all throughout my years, I uh, had different sparring partners and all that. And I definitely feel like now it's, it, it's, um, it's, it's a lot more mellow than it used to be. Mm-hmm. From when I first started as well, so especially even even just eight, uh, nine years ago, mm-hmm. I feel like it's a lot more mellow than it used to be. I remember mm-hmm. back when I first started, even being a no belt, yellow belt, purple belt, blue belt, mm-hmm. I got whooped mm-hmm. by any rank. Like I would go up against all the way ranges from white belt all the way to third degree black belt, where I got roundhouse kicked in the side of the head and went down to the ground. Right. Yeah. So, I- I remember us having a, a yellow belt. That's because he's, he's old now and trying to get into heaven. <laughs> <laughs> I am old and I am trying. Uh, that reminds me, that, that's one thing I've always seen with our guys. Uh, there was some guy, I think his name was Nick. Maybe Nick Kava came in. Dude came in with a yellow belt, said, yeah, I talked with Sifu Ron. He, you guys are doing your Saturday sparring, you know, fight club we used to spar you know the whole time and yeah i'm a yellow belt and then he comes in to come to find out he's been training for like 20 years just never got past that yellow belt but yeah the color of the belt don't matter um now uh sifu what about yourself what was how things changed with sparring and the live contact drills and what was the fighting like back at macarthur um there was no gloves that was that was before june Ray came up with that gear so there was no gloves there was that white footy shin guard thing that Kim Pacific sells. That, that was, that was about it. Mm-hmm. Um, bare hands or tape or hand wraps would maybe duct tape over it. You know, that was, um, that was pretty much about it. No headgear. There was no headgear for anybody. Um, yeah. Uh, as opposed to now, uh, you know, there's a lot of times I'm still sparring with, with no gloves because it, changes the complexity of the fight so yeah. we're, right now it depends on what we're gearing up for what we're working on back then that's all we had since mm-hmm. then because of uh grandmaster chavez and eric and and um um the queen of mean uh it was a eight-time world uh muay thai champion that was teaching at our gym too Kathy Long? Uh, miriam, miriam nakamoto Oh, so okay, okay, yeah. yeah. Between Eric and Miriam, they brought the Muay Thai. So in Pleasanton, I seem to do more, more kickboxing than tournament sparring, although we spent the last two months working on tournament sparring because we, we were going to go. We went last weekend to a tournament. So I was trying to prep him for that. 
I think that's the cool thing in Kaiju is seeing the different schools. You'll see some guys training with the hand wraps, some guys training with the 16 ounce gloves, some guys training with no gloves. I was introducing my guys to no glove sparring this last couple of weeks uh, again, because it just, it shows a whole new dimension of what's happening. Now I heard uh, there's some JKD guys used to come visit the MacArthur school once in a while. Uh, is that true? Uh, yes. Uh, Jimmy Lee, which was Eric, uh, uh, Bruce Lee's business partner in Oakland used to bring his crew of boys over to MacArthur Boulevard to spar with us. Mm -hmm. um, I was just a youngster then. I, get, I got in on a couple of those, but I was probably only 15, 16 years old at the time. But watching Jim just knock the crap out of him, watching, you know, the Basilio and, and, uh, and all that crew, the, the Palin brothers just, you know, they only came like three times and then they didn't come back. Um, but they came to us because we sparred like them, you know, they came with the, you know, the, the, the beginning of enter the dragon, you know, those, those big finger gloves, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, so yeah, we, uh, we held our own. I'll just say that. All right. Good, good, good. Now, um, we're, we're going to go on to our next shot, but real quick, I, I wanted to know if you remember that time, uh, Eric brought up about, uh, you know, the, the, one of the three times I got knocked out, um, do you remember the time at Dino's when you uh, hit me with a knee to the head because you saw a particular person in the audience that uh, we don't like? Oh, it's, I wouldn't say I don't like him. And, uh, <laughs> okay, well, maybe I would, but... Yeah, I, I, I you a different I, word. I, I don't know if that's the reason why I hit you or it was just a part <laughs> of opportunity. I, I don't know. No, well, you apologize to me because uh, it's right when you threw the knee, you happen to see his head and see him in the uh, crowd. Like, Oops. Well, that, 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 that may have been in my back of my psyche. <laughs> Might have been. It's possible. Oh, well, All right, I'll do our next shot. Wait, 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 wait. But, well, we... <laughs> <laughs> Talking about people that he didn't like, or people people showing up. <laughs> oh, so, <laughs> so when we were kids, you know, there was nothing. Nobody in the class when I started was over fifteen years old. Mm -hmm. So our parents used to come. Our moms would usually come in, and you know, if we saw somebody that can, this was before he was married <laughs> if, we, <laughs> if we saw somebody come in that was not one of our moms it was probably somebody that he was trying to impress and it would be the worst time for us ever like like we would get the snot kicked out of us we would do like a thousand push-ups we would basically he was trying to kill some some 10 year olds <laughs> just to impress these women that were walking into class so if any woman that walked in we would all look at each other like whose mom is that and if it was somebody's mom we'd be like oh no here we go <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah we there was there was a lot of that going on <laughs> and <laughs> the times have changed <laughs> right karen shows up we're, we're probably better off because <laughs> she was like don't hurt him <laughs> <laughs> right. she's a good mom <laughs> all the time I, I got this poor kid named Mateo, and when we were doing Zoom, all I kept doing, Mateo, Mateo, your left, your other left, your other left. <laughs> Karen, come in, be nice, Ronald. <laughs> nice. Well, I stopped teaching from the from the garage because she comes scold me all the time. <laughs> That's when you that's when you hit me lighter because when she shows up to class to drop you something off, you're always like, Oh yeah, I'm not doing anything. <laughs> Hi, honey. <laughs> Hi, honey. <laughs> that's why I call her mom. But if you guys are ready, we'll take our third shot. We'll go on to our next question. We're gonna be talking about the future next. To the future. To the future. So I'd like to ask you guys about your hopes and expectations. Um for me, there are two things I'm hoping to see for the future of Kaiju Kembo. Number one, I, want, I would like to see more Kaiju Kembo guys and girls go pro and say they do Kaiju Kembo. And number two, I want to see a continued distinction of schools that do forms and don't do forms. Now, the thing about the professional fighters, Chuck Liddell, 
he got famous in the UFC and we didn't even know he was Kaiju Kemba. We had to accidentally find his name and Hackleman's mm-hmm. name on the family tree. Now we got people like Bobby Seronio who are doing very well and saying, I do Kaiju Kembo. I want to see more of that in our future. Uh, the other thing with forms, I don't want to see a unified Kaiju Kembo has to have forms. The Kaiju Kembo should not have forms. I'm happy seeing a distinction in schools and I'm hoping to continue to see that variety and debate and discussion about different things. Schools like Hackleman's and schools like ours, being able to do forms and not do forms. Um, let's go to Eric for yourself or Kaiju Kembo. What are your hopes, your uh, expectations, whatever for the future of Kaiju Kembo? So being on the board um, of the KAA, one of the things that I'm, what we were discussing that kind of brought to the forefront was creating um, <clears throat> sort of almost like a, a being a Kaju Kimbo black belt and a KA uh, black belt, that being on the equivalency of like an Eagle Scout and <clears throat> um, implementing not only the, the martial arts side of it, but the humanitarian side of things. And, and I want to see a point to which like, that is a sought after thing mm-hmm. and, a, and, and like a selling point for all the schools to say, Hey, this is, this is the program that we put your kids through it. Not only, <clears throat> it not only um, teaches them the protection to defend themselves, but to be a good human being. Um, one of the things that, and see where you can kind of chime in on this, if I'm getting it wrong, but he used to tell us this quote, I think it was by Genghis Khan was, um, civilize the mind, but make savage the body. And that was kind of always kind of a mantra for, uh, for me at least. Mm-hmm. That goes well with the, uh, the eight mental aims that uh, Juarez brought in from uh, the Costco, I think. The, the whole the civilizing the mind, I think as well. Mickey, how about yourself? Um, y- you know what? It's funny when I first started, um, and and GM has seen me progress through a lot of stuff. I don't know if I'm even answering this question right, but he always told me to to teach, and you know, because I was at Fry's Electronics, and you know, I was hitting my job, and you know what? I think sometimes this path chose me. So now I get to do this full time. I get to share Kaju Kembo with a lot of the. Uh, the kids in Cherryland, and they always ask me because I'll, I'll be doing something different. They go, what is that? I said, it's Kaju. They're like, what's Kaju? You know, um, and then I'll explain to them. They're like, you know, you, you, well, you're pretty laid back, but you go kind of hard. I'm like, yeah, I know. You can be laid back and, and, and cool and still be like, Eric said, a good humanitarian. I think, you know, um, Ron put me on this path. You know, 25 years ago, I – I can't believe I get to do this full time. Um, but as far as just spreading Kaju Kembo as, as a whole, uh, just we just got to keep talking about it. I, I think that's what we got to do. So it never dies. And, and with Chuck and whoever and Bobby, you know, doing their thing, you know, eventually um, it's just going to be a household thing, just like uh, everything else. You know, MMA to me is Kaju Kembo. I don't. That, I, I don't know if I even asked you that question, John. Did yeah, I you did. that? Yeah, you did. That's exactly it, man. That's, that's what you're hoping for the future. And that's, I'm hoping that's the same it. thing. It becomes a household name. So, again, I'm, I'm put in this position to just do what I love, like Ron, Ron has done for mm-hmm. all these years. So, I'm just carrying the torch. Yeah, I think that is exactly making it a household name. Uh, Sigan Juarez told me his hope was to see Kaju Kembo in the Olympics. Um, and the way you say, you know, MMA is Kaiju Kembo. I mean, that is a possibility for the future. Uh, I would like to see it go that far. Now, Oliver, how about yourself? Again, not only Kaiju Kembo, but also for yourself as you're the youngest one here, uh, as well, not only Kaiju Kembo, but yourself in the future, where do you want to go in Kaiju Kembo? Where do you want to see the art go in the future? So I'll, I'll start off with myself. Uh, so for myself in the future, I really, want to open my own school at some point in the future 
Um, I don't know when that'll be. I don't know how or where it'll happen, but I hope at some point I will be able to open my school so that I can continue Kajukembo downwards. And I, my answer for the future of Kajukembo is a little bit of a mixture of everyone's. I think, honestly, Kajukembo should be a household name because, for example, the other day, uh, actually yesterday, I was in my EMT class and we were doing a scenario um, where basically we were dispatched to a homeless shelter. Uh, we had been dispatched. Uh, there was a threatening person on scene. We got PD to remove them from scene, quote unquote. But there was a lady lying on the floor who had been assaulted. Uh, <laughs> not realizing the threat, she actually had a knife behind her back. And when she became conscious, she stabbed two of my EMTs, turned around, went to stab me. I blocked the knife and took the knife out of her hand and threw it away. Mm -hmm. And I think for me as well is spreading that down and teaching people that there is a way to get out of those situations. Like it's not hopeless in the sense of if you are under attack by something, you can get out of it. Mm -hmm. And I follow along with Eric as well in the situation of it just raises you to be a good human. Mm -hmm. Like I, I personally would not be the same person I was now if it was not for Sifu Ron. I'm on the same page with you on that one. Sifu, how about yourself? What are your uh, hopes, expectations for Kaiju in the future? Um, I'm not a very political person. I've tried to stay away from the politics. I did spend some time on the board, um, but stepped away for my own reasons. Um, <clears throat> and then just like everybody, complain, complain, complain about stuff that I saw. Um, the KSDI bo uh, board, the BOA, C. Joe's Board of Advisors, um, came to me and asked me to join the board in 2016. And again, not wanting to be really involved in politics, I, I was hemming and hawing, but you know, um, I always seek advice from my best. And Eric's words resonated in my mind and in my heart. And that is, you can't fix anything from the outside. Whether we fixed anything or not, I don't know. But I think Kaji Kimba was starting to come together more and better now. Now that the old ones have kind of gone away. And this, I, I'm one of the old ones now, but I'm a couple generations down. And me and all the guys, Woody and Joe Bautista, and you know, we all get along because we competed against each other. We're all friends. You know, three of the people on the board I've known for a long time, and I consider them, you know, very good friends. You know, and the other two, two that I that I met through the board, same thing. You know, um, I trust them. I trust where they're going with this, where they're leading this. The new administration of KSDI is trying to be inclusive and and by proof that I'm even on the board you know um, representing Gaylord back in the day was really hard because we were hated and we had to do things we had to fight harder we had to do better on the cut the floor to to even get anybody's attention you know that respect had to be earned twice as much and twice as hard as anybody else that was that was not KSDI um but that has changed a lot. And this new administration that's that's taken over since um, Senior Grand Master Geechee has passed, they're doing their best to do what they can to keep this on track and keep Kaju Kimbo going. And I see a good future for it because there's a lot of good kids out. Um, Kaju Kimbo is out in the in the main you know stream now. Um, Mike. My son-in-law, Michael McDonald, says he's not Kaji Kemmel and, he, and he's just jujitsu. But every time he teaches for me at one of the classes, he's doing drills. I'm going, you know, that's a Juarez drill, right? Because he comes from Tommy. Right. You know, you know, that's a Juarez drill, right? He may not know the grab arts and the punching attacks or the forms, but he comes from a Kaji Kemmel mind school. Because of Sifu Tommy, or Grandmaster Tommy, he, he comes from that. And what I say is Kaiju Kembo isn't a style, it's a mindset. Mm -hmm. It truly is a mindset. If you don't 
I don't know too many styles that think like us, you know, and, and just like, you know, what Oliver said, you know, how many people can just disarm like that? She wasn't expecting that because nobody's ever done that. And, and we've been working that, you know, quite a bit, you know, because it's dangerous out there. So I'm, I'm working my knife work, you know, and, um, you know, I'm always a student, so I've sure learned a lot more since I've gotten my black belt than I ever knew before it. Always a student. That's always a good thing. Got to be always a student. I think right, the listen. piggyback on that real quick. <clears throat> One of the things that makes us different is the mantra of go out and learn and bring it back. Um, and if it hurts, it works. So that, that, that mindset I think will keep um, the style kind of alive and, and more, in my opinion, more um, viable because it, it started that way and it's a continuation of that. It was always figure out what works, use that and then throw away the rest. And it was always, yeah, and I was always told, go out, learn something and bring it back. And, you know, whatever works, <clears throat> bring it back and, and show us. So <clears throat> in that respect, speaking about the future, um, I think that that is going to be the way forward. It's going to be always uh, learn, come back and teach. And, and I think that that is how, how the future of this art is going to kind of maintain. Yeah. And, and, and that's how we've grown because of you bringing back the Muay Thai, because of Miki going out and training with Joe Moria and bringing in more jujitsu, you know, and John's Taekwondo stuff. When he came in, we, we implemented and I still keep some of those drills and, you know, always add, never, never throw away and always add to it, you know. I, uh, go ahead, Ollie. I think that one thing that's so important about Kaji Kemba that sets us apart from every other martial art is other martial arts have been around for hundreds thousands of years and they're still the same as they were back then mm. like they're still the same as they were back then whereas what we do it's ever evolving it's always changing it's always growing and that that is the future of Kaju Kembo. Is it is it for to grow, to change, to evolve, to become something new? Takes take the old, keep it, but make it better. You know, I agree. That's that's absolutely. I I teach differently than I taught when Eric was there. I teach differently than when Mickey was there. I teach differently than when John was there. You're getting the the final product of. <laughs> of the rest of these three that, that came before you that to, to work what they brought in as well as the implementation of what they brought in. We yeah. suffered brain damage, so you don't have to. <laughs> I, yeah. Well, I wouldn't say I'm not suffering brain <laughs> well, damage. All right? don't, don't even know that. <laughs> but I, I have nobody but Ollie right now. Ollie gets the brunt of everything. Yeah, <laughs> everything. He gets All right, we're gonna move on to our final shot rock. and our final question. So if you guys are ready for our final one, here we go. This is just a open-ended final thought. Uh, what is the final thing you guys want to say today to the people listening, the people who do Kaiju Kembo, to your instructors? I myself want to say thank you to every instructor that I've had. Uh, <sighs> Igon Juarez is a huge inspiration for me and why I even came to Japan. Uh, but Mickey, Eric, uh, Sifu, all you guys really changed my life, my fighting style. Uh, I've said it before. I don't know if I, who I've told directly. Uh, I had suicidal thoughts since I was 12 years old, depression, all kinds of stuff. Getting into Kaju Kembo uh, as I went into university changed my life. And it gave me hope. It gave me possibility. I'm, I'm here because of Kaju Kembo. Uh, what Sifu Ron brought me into has saved my life many ways. Uh, Mickey and Eric, the things you guys taught me to this day still has an effect on me. I say thank you to everybody. And this is my final thing to say. Uh, Oliver, I want to go to you first. Uh, final thought for the day. What do you want to say? Um, first thing I want to just say is thank you to Sifu Ron for everything that he has done for me. I, as I, I said it before, I would not be the same person 
today if it was not for him. I definitely would have gotten into way more trouble in high school. I would have done way more stupid things. I remember times where my mom would drag me by the back of my shirt, drop me at my Sifu's feet, make me tell him what I did wrong. And then my ass would get whooped on the floor when she left because she'd walk out and he'd be like, all right, I got you for the whole couple hours. That's a good mom. Yep. Um, and it it is something as well that saved me. I relate to you on that, uh, John, is around my freshman year, I had a lot of suicidal thoughts. I was not the same person I was, but every time I'd go to class, I would just put all that aside and I'd focus in class. And it's something that <clears throat> all time, it has inspired me to be strong and stand up for those who cannot stand up for themselves. Mm -hmm. All right. Mickey, about yourself. Yeah. Um, my final thoughts would be again, uh, you know, uh, Sifu always said he didn't know everything. So to go out there and, research and bring it back and also now at this time in his life um i was asking the question what would you tell a 46 year old ron and you know what take better cares of your body you know and, and just try to enjoy life a little bit more and you know use kaju kembo as a tool for just keeping you guys are talking about a lot of mental health i think that's super important right now i think if we don't move our bodies, we get a little more stressed out about stuff. So again, uh, just keep it moving, keep learning. And you know what? Have some Jameson and, you know, <laughs> you'll, you'll see pictures of, of Jim with on his porch. And I think, you know, yeah, let's not take life too seriously. You know, I've lost a few people this year due to suicide, you know, due to COVID and stuff like that. So, hey, guys, you know what? Live in the moment. And, that, and that's the biggest thing. And, and teach as many as you can. So our legacy lives on forever. And, and that's what I want to do. And I think that's why I'm, I'm put in this position to teach these kids from the Dublin area to the Cherryland area. I'm trying to, I get both the best of both worlds. I get the kids with Teslas and I get the kids with nothing. So I get to share my experience through martial arts, through fitness with these kids. But, hey, real talk, guys, mental health, especially now with social media, is to just be in that moment and, and share whatever experience you guys have with everybody. Because back in the day, we didn't have social media. We, we just went and worked out, and that was it. You know, we had camcorders, <laughs> camcorders back in the day. We You know, we had to set it up. But uh, – Again, thank you to um, Seafood uh, for always being there through um, through a lot. And I don't know if we're going to get to the Vegas story, but that might be <laughs> another one. Oh, boy. And John was not old enough to drink at that time. He was up there babysitting, so I'll leave that right there. Yeah. Oh, was John with us that trip? I was yeah, there. Yeah, he was up there was babysitting. 20. He, he could have come out. Oh. I, I was, you know, I was anyway. 20 and in love, so. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> Hey, gentlemen, I need to go. Um, enjoy the rest of your night, okay? Well, I got to go, guys. Love you, man. Hey, right, guys. Love Bye, you guys. Mickey. Peace. Good to see you. Breakfast, Sorry. breakfast, breakfast. Yes, sir. Okay. Eric, how about yourself? Um, <clears throat> final thoughts. Basically, like you guys, my life was pretty much altered. Um, I came into this as a kid, 10 years old. I was <laughs> probably the biggest headache that he had <laughs> in the class. <laughs> and I felt like he felt like I was a project kid or like I was gonna <laughs> I was gonna be a special project for him <clears throat> for a long time. Um, but the funny thing is is that um, I had to stop when I was in the ninth grade um, because my mom couldn't bring us anymore because she had gotten another job. So um, my brothers and I all left. It was three of us to train with him. <clears throat> we left. Um, but as soon the day, I think it was the day after I got my driver's license, I came back. So to say that 
is to say that there was an indelible mark left and <clears throat> and it was kind of like a calling and I have been like in contact ever since and that was 30 something years ago when I came back at least 30 years ago so I've been with him since for known him for what seven or 37 years and been going strong probably 30 it was like 90 so 32 33 years ago so <clears throat> i um it's interesting because you know sifu means teaching father and that's exactly kind of you know how i saw him and how he like treated us like we were his kids and always his kids even karen like when i call and say your son's on the phone and so <clears throat> you know that that means a lot and that means you know one of the things that <clears throat> he instills like in in me and in my ideology is that you know i can walk around with a sense of confidence and i can walk around with a sense of of um a shorty and i tell him and he kind of laughed at this before i was like if somebody asked me i'm gonna tell them the truth because they can't they can't beat me up so <laughs> what are they going to do <laughs> what <laughs> I, I have no reason to lie to you because you're not i'm you i don't see you as a threat <laughs> even if it was a threat you know it, at most it's a challenge so that ide ideology and that reality and like mickey was saying this is something that can't be taken away and can't once you bestow that on on someone it is theirs and it is really theirs to do what they want with it and what they and 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 <clears throat> it is theirs to do what they want with it but you also have this this commitment to to paying it forward and, and teaching and things like or, or being um what's the word altruistic with this um <clears throat> for example i never paid i never paid a dollar <laughs> i'm i might have paid i my mom might have paid like 50 bucks over the past 37 years <laughs> so when we started, it was, it was, it was always come to class and figure out everything else after class, right? And so that mentality has kind of pushed me in peril. Or like I feel like I feel I feel weird even charging somebody to train, only because of that. So and. <clears throat> Me too. So that 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 instinct of it is about the art and not about the money, and it is about the instilling and not about the dollars, um, has been permeated through all of my martial arts. So even with Chavez, he like when I turned when I was fighting professionally fighting for money, he would take a percentage of the purse, but he wouldn't even before that he wouldn't. He, I never paid him. He even put me up in his house. So, you know, that, that, that feeling of family and that feeling of, of, you know, togetherness. And we are in this, this fraternity of fighters and fraternity of martial artists has always held a special place in my heart. And even now there's a Kaji Kimbo schools around here. And I have a friend that has a son that, um, he's autistic and he's a uh, Kaj Kimbo brown belt. And so every time I see him or see pictures of him, I'm like way to go Ohana, like that, you know, that type of, that type of feeling is something that you don't get in a lot of quote unquote extracurricular activities. So, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's been an honor and a pleasure to kind of know this man and kind of know you know, how much he cares for all of his students. I agree. Sifu, how about yourself? Uh, first, I don't get to do this without you guys. 
You know, you, you guys are four generations of my legacy from my first to my last. I'm leaving my legacy in good hands with all of you. Eric, I wish you'd really start teaching again. Um, you have too much knowledge not to. Um, Eric, you know, I just, I, you are my son. You, you guys are my son. You always have been, and, you know, just um, even to this day. Um, Oliver's future is bright, and, and I know he's going to teach someday. Um, John, you never paid me pretty much a dime either, huh? Nope. You <laughs> paid Oliver, me. you did. Your mom did. Thanks, mom and dad. Yeah, <laughs> my, my, my parents paid dollars. But, but, I haven't paid a single but, cent. <laughs> but, yeah, well, there you go. In the year and a half or two that you've been teaching for me, you haven't had to pay me anything. And in fact, I pay you for your time because your time is valuable. And I, it's much appreciated because I can't do this without you, Ollie, right I'd now. I'd still do it for free. And, and you know, it's just, I, I know, I understand, but I'm doing okay enough that I can give you a little something, something you know, and that, that means a lot to me. Um, same thing with you, John. I, I paid you to be there and you, you helped me through my, you know, every part of my class. My, my school got better because of you. You know, um, and the teacher that you were still talk to about to this day, you know, you're a legend in the school. And, and as, as for Eric, you know, too, just um, I'm proud of each and every one of you for your Kaji Kimball accomplishments, for your, who the, the men that, you're, that you've grown and are growing up to be. You know, I, I take that title of Sifu teaching father very, very seriously. That's why to this day, I'd still rather, you know, them call, Ollie, what did my kids call me? They call you Sifu. Because that's what I am, you know, always. Uh, I'll let the politics speak for itself and I'll, I'll put on the high mucka mucka belt when I have to, but for the most part, shoes on the mat and whatever I walk in on because I'm too lazy to change into a gi now. So I just soon. <laughs> that's so true. That's so true. Teach him whatever I have on. Um, my, my, I would say my body's giving out on me, but my mind isn't. If it wasn't for my hips and I could still kick I, I, and, and I didn't, wasn't in the pain that I'm in all the time, I could go on another 10, 15 years, no question. You know, I have it in my heart. I'm still getting out there and sparring a little bit with the with the kids. You know, I can't do much. I can't kick, but you know, I can still give them all my tricks, which is what I've been doing. Um, he uses me as an extension of his body. <laughs> show him, Ollie. You know, and and I got a really good group of kids. Eric, you, you work with my group that I was there. It's it, it's a lot different than it was in San Leandro. You know, the, the kids in Pleasanton are different. You know, they, they, you know, and especially the ones that I have. Oliver, what were you? A, I was a chubby, storky kid, small and almost round. I've never and, heard someone called storky. I, it's the first time for me. <laughs> and, 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 and basically all I have right now are, are academic kids and band kids. And, and he was a, a, a theater. I was a theater you know? kid. So I, I didn't have the badasses that I had. Man, plus um, the boys club, Eric, we, we, we had an army at the boys club, man. There were just some, some kids just went out there and thrashed, you know. And as, you, as you've said it before, and you'll say it all the time, back in San Leandro, you turned bad kids good, and now in Pleasanton, you turn good kids bad. <laughs> yeah, that's about right. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. Cobra Kai? What? No, oh yeah no. oh oh yeah oh definitely. definitely and on that note we're gonna end our show today so for those of you at home thank you for tuning in to watch uh please click like share comment and subscribe and please comment uh i am not a serious podcaster this is not even really a podcast it's a youtube channel we do in the podcast format uh we'll see where that goes in the future but please comment. Let us know what you thought of the show. Let us know what you were drinking, if you are drinking along with us. And let us know if there's something you want to hear us talk about. If you want to see some Kaiju Kemble people, take some shots and talk about something. Uh, otherwise, this has been Four Shots of Kaiju Kemble. I've been your host, John Hoylo. I'll see you guys next time. Until then, stay strong. Stay Kaiju Kemble strong. Mahalo. You all.
now that that's over, I stopped Mickey from peeing off the Excalibur Bridge. <laughs> <laughs>